Now I'm at the 56. All right, IAT, EAT hooking, and inline hooking, right? Here, okay. We, when we learn about uh, learn about uh, P file format, we uh, we learn about e, there's a uh, import address table and there's an export address table, right? And import address table is a uh, table that holds the address of the function that one application uses, right? If we use a if it's a prenup, then it has an address of the prenup in the uh, import address table. Uh, how about the export address table? I'm the libc, right? Yes, DLS, yeah. So the, the library DLS all purpose is serving some functionality to others, right? And how to do it is when it implement functions, those functions, you know, address are stored into the import, uh, export address table, right? And actually, one thing, another thing, import address table, export address table, actually modified by uh, Windows, right? Once it is mapped into the memory, because you know where to map, you know, into memory, it, it can changes, right? So, for example, prenap, you know, library, I cannot say, you know, my prenaps address always, you know, has four thousand because you know when it's actually loaded into memory, it can change it, right? So once Windows actually load the library and it modify after you know loading into the you know, let's say hex three thousand and it changes you know address of the like prenup or address of mem copy you know those address been modified by the Windows by on the OS right and this uh, let's see rather than me reading through this slide let's go uh, here. Let me see, do I want to explain this one? Okay, yeah, I still want to explain this one, okay. Okay, one thing that, you know, IAT is belongs to one P file, right? So I'm explaining this one as a very high level, but if you are interested in this in more detail, please take the uh, like uh, binary, they, you know, go for two days to uh, deal with these topics. So IAT, for example, I am the you know wicked suite app that exe right. I have import address table. Let's say one of them is a prenup or and a mem copy. That's my import address table. And when it's actually loaded into memory and IAT hooking happens, and if malicious code change, changes changes the address of prenup inside my IAT, that means if I call my prenup, then it goes to some somewhere else. And the, since I'm the one module, if uh, uh, IAT hooking is uh, uh, take place, that uh, affects only this you know, one executable and uh, module file. Okay. How about the uh, EAT hooking? Since EAT is the one that has the address of uh, functions that in you know, one the library serve to others. If one DLL loaded into the memory and somebody comes in and change the export in you know, an address table, then what happening is whichever the uh, the modules that loaded into memory after this you know the uh, module, then once the other module gets loaded, then it will go to reference this modified you know if export address table. That means every module loaded after this in you know, a modified in you know, a module it gets all affected, the other modules. Okay, does it clear or does that make sense? It's fine? Okay, because I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, let me, let's go further, what is happening. For here, does this one, who's familiar with this kind of line of language? All right, so remember, right, you remember, you can, you know, when you are actually looking at it now, you recall. Okay, this is assembly language. Basically, this uh, kind of operation. Let's forget about this one. Then let's see if you know this call function, right? Actually, what is happening is it is uh, calling a function. This uh, bracket, this one means it is actually looking at the address at four zero one one two C at the one address, and it is basically uh, 
be referencing that memory space, which is the exact uh, type of call. If we call through the IAT, this is kind of uh, the assembly and the language you're going to see. Okay? And what, uh, if it's a normal case, since at this address in the memory, you want to hold the address of this, you know, some function. So if you call some, you know, certain function, in our delivery project table here, at the, some function, so at the memory 40112C, you have the address of some function of this one. So if you, there is a call, then you actually jump to the some function. Right? Oh, okay. All right. So since uh, you know, other people cannot see it, let's see. Okay, can you see? Okay, this will be better. Okay. All right. So, okay. There is a at the uh, memory space at the 40112C, there is an uh, address of some function here, right? And actually, call uh, take place, then it reference this memory space here at this address and actually jump to the some function and it execute here. Then at the return, it comes back. This is a normal procedure, right? However, if there is an IAT hooking, then some malicious code changes the uh, address at the zero uh, 40112 C, right? You change the address. Then what it happens, it was actually when you see up here, it's the same, you know, address space dereferencing. However, the entry got changed, right? Then it once this call happens, it's actually being redirected to somewhere else, then this, you know, actual valid function here that belongs to WikiSuite uh, library, then you want to go to the, it says, you know, wiki, wiki DLL, DLL, somewhere else, basically, right? And once it actually executes itself, again, it's the same deal as a applicator it wants to do some malicious you know, operation, however, it does not want to break existing system, then you want to be very noticeable, get okay, something you know, going on. So after you usually uh, have done is a malicious operation, then it calls the original one, then it comes back in this sequence. Okay? Everyone's good? All right, how about the inline hooking? The inline hooking is if you uh, uh, make a program in, in on the uh, Visual Studio, and when you compile with a special option, hot patch, then actually, uh, who knows hot patch? Hot patch, okay. Uh, hot patch is the one, let's say, somebody uh, made it, not somebody, usually hot patch usually occur, only occurs on the uh, software that is developed by Microsoft usually. But what hot patch, hot patch does is, you know, pack, you know the patching, right? Patching is, you know, you found some either vulnerability or some bug, then you need to patch it, right? But what hot patch means is, for example, there is some server running and you cannot kill it. You have to, you know, still run, right? It can be maybe mail server or it can be some web server. It has to run, but, on, but at the same time, you have to patch it, right? That is, without killing the process, you can patch it, uh, to the running process. That's called a hot patch. Okay? And what is happening is when you make a program and compile, compile it with a hot patch option, then it actually inserts some meaningless instruction at the beginning of the function. And why is there? When hot patch you know, is necessary, it actually overrides you know, those unnecessary uh, meaningless instructions and actually redirects to somewhere else, which is a patched code. Okay, and when patch code is executed, then it's come back. Is it make sense? Oh, good. And this is very, very uh, highly related to the very programming. So, I think in general, learning you know programming also kind of you know important or be familiar with. It. All right, and let's see. Did I go through the all of uh, uh, slide sixty? Um, Okay. Or do you have any questions?
This way it is boring. Kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so I explain. So let's see about the inline docking. Right. In the normal operation, let's see. There's some function. It's calling some function. At some function, do you see the move EDI, EDI? It, what it does is it's just moving. EDI is a one of the register, and this one is a, just moving from itself, to, uh, no, from itself to itself. Basically, means it's a meaningless operation, right? And this code you will see only if the uh, code is compiled with a hot patch option, right? Usually you will see, see this one. Okay, and this is a normal operation, basically call and it executes this function and return back, right? And again, you see that they actually point this one here, okay? So this one is a meaningless operation and execute here and return, right? Okay, how about this? If inline hooking it take place, right? Then it is calling some function Right, but at the beginning, do you see in the up here difference? There was a move EDI, EDI, right? However, it is changing to, you know, immediately right after some function is being called, then this one actually jump to malicious function here, right? Somewhere else. This is the inline hooking, right? Then it executes all the malicious functionality and come back to uh, some, some function, right? Basically, for here, just I want you to know uh, the concept of what is doing it. Have heard the man in the middle? There you go, the man in the middle. Yeah, basically, it is a hijacking some uh, instruction sequence to the malicious in operation and then coming back. But it's making sure actually the original code is being executed so they will not going to break the you know, original code. Right? This is doing the man in the middle. Okay, in the as a uh, instruction uh, in the level. Right. And this one is just the one that we learned basically, I think this is the last one, all right. And summarizing it, right? Again, process has its own uh, memory space. And one process in, in here, it can be, you know, maybe IAT hooking is going on here, but still this one does not affect the other process, right? Again, I should use the mouse here, okay. It does not affect here. And if there's an inline hooking you know, takes place here, still is independent between the processes. Okay. Any question? So what should we get what kind of so the first column is that's with ID hooking. And ID hooking. Third, the third is the inline hooking. Inline hooking. So we have two two injection types. That's right, that's right. It's a different processes has its own pros, uh, uh, pros, uh, memory space, right? If one is being attacked, being attacked, it does not mean this, you know, the other process is being attacked because they are separate, right? Any question? <laughs>